everyone. That was just night number three in the new Storyteller Overland Stealth. I'm really starting to get an appreciation for the layout of this van, how open everything is. It's more like homey feeling. I still haven't quite figured out like storage solutions on where I should be putting everything, but again, this van is temporary, so. Got random things like toiletries just hanging out on the counter. Got some food, got some whiskey over here. There's just so much space in here that I can kind of just leave things like sit out to have quick access to them instead of finding a dedicated little niche to put them in. So it's pretty nice, I'm digging it. Now here's the one thing I have not done yet. Hot water circulator. So now the hot water should be flowing through sort of S-bar heating system. Time to test out the halo shower. So that actually worked out pretty dang well. I can just sort of like half press the halo shower back in, that way it can still dry before I wrap it all up again. The water in here was extremely hot and I know where the mixing valve is so I might actually pop that off and dial it back a little bit. When I had it on full hotness it was just like scalding so I almost moved it back towards the cold side and water pressure was great. It was plenty warm enough to take a shower and let's see actually how we did on water conservation. I'm of course used to showering in my van where I'm always trying to conserve water so it was a very conservative shower. I think the fresh tank went down like 1%. Okay, there we go. Maybe it needed to update. Now it's sitting at 78%. So 4% of the water tank just to shower? That's not too bad. Now, even though I've lived in a van, it's still kind of a juggling act when you're not used to the layout, when you're doing like daily things, showering, cooking breakfast, sitting down to eat. So it will take a little bit of getting used to. I now just realized that I didn't move everything from my van into this van, so I don't have any utensils. Knife it is. So now you guys are probably wondering what I'm doing here in Southern California, so let's check it out. It's going to be a pretty rad day. So I rolled out here into the desert yesterday where you guys saw the initial walk around of the Storyteller. We're at an event that was just put together recently known as the One Wheel GT Drop Zone. What's up guys? Good morning. So this is the whole One Wheel crew. Um, I don't know, should we do intros for everyone? I'm Joey. Jovi, Ryland, <laughs> Ted. Sad. You guys have seen Ted in my videos before. Sierra. Sierra. Taz is with Verve Coffee. We can check out his van later. Laser. Brandt. And Brant. That was good. Bonky. <laughs> so a lot of these guys are working with one wheel and the whole purpose of coming out here is one to ride the GTs but it's more just going to be a hangout session so they got a lot of rad stuff planned for today. Going to have some cornhole tournaments so sit back relax and enjoy it.
All right, Taz, you ready for the pitch? What is Verve Coffee? I want to check out your van too. Yeah, uh, so Verve Coffee is third wave coffee roaster, roasted by hand in Santa Cruz. The small batches specify in farm two tables, so we work directly with the people in the lots that actually grow and harvest all the coffee. So those are your instant coffee packets yeah, there. Yeah, so we got these little instants. Grab your cup, open up your pack, rip it up. Boil some hot water and you should be good. Now I just gotta wait for the hot water. So I actually had some of this coffee this morning. You guys probably know that I don't drink coffee very often because it's acidic, messes with my stomach, but drank a full cup of it and tasted good. My stomach's fine, so might have to try it a little bit more throughout the weekend. I'm coming inside your van, Taz. Mm. It's a little clean. It just slept in it. So. so this thing is a Sprinter van. We got a whole Sprinter gang out here. One wheel's got theirs over there. And this thing is a 170 extended. It's a full blown like barista dream in here. Making coffee. Got a ton of water. You can sleep in here. It's pretty sick. This thing is huge. <laughs> you got a fridge too. And you got a fridge and a generator and, and heat. A generator. We got heater, lights, water pump, water heater, reverse osmosis system. Don't really know how it works, but yeah. <laughs> it sounds good though. Four by four, what else do you need? Now over here under the one wheel tent, we got Ted. What's up dog? Howdy. And the highlight of the show here. Other than hanging out, we're obviously here to test out the GTs. So give us a little bit of a rundown, dude. Yeah. So. GT is our new flagship model. It's replacing the XR that everyone uh, loved, which is great. Uh, but now with the GT, we got more power, we got more range. So we're looking at 32 miles of range on these bad boys right here. That is insane. <laughs> I know, it's pretty wild. And what's really cool about this is like they fully kind of redesigned the board and now we have full concave foot pads. Yeah, so you guys are making these tires in-house now. Exactly, which yeah. Is so cool. this is like kind of a healthy mix of like the pint tire with the XR tire so it's a bit rounder and it's a little bit narrow but it still has that wideness that everyone liked about the XR. Yeah that's one thing that I liked like pint versus XR I always liked the sort of how curved the pint tire is yeah. and they've basically incorporated both of them here. Yeah. Soft slick tire and but this is the one I'm stoked on. The new tread is pretty badass. And obviously out here we're like basically riding on the moon. There's moon yeah. dust and aggro crag everywhere. So it'll be cool to uh, test these things out in a little bit. We have some new foot pads as well. So we're rocking the love hump on this guy, which is just a, a nice little like arch uh, support for your foot. If you have flat feet, it kind of like locks you in a little bit. So you're like on those curves, you kind of have something to press up against. It's pretty rad. Laser, the video guy actually created it in the parking lot with Kyle. And that's how the love hump came, about, came to be. It's a good name too. Yeah. And I then, this guy right here, this board, is what we're gonna be No, nope, nope, gotta censor that. Oh. It's a surprise, we can't tell oh, my bad, my bad. So when I got in here last night, they were sort of riding them around. I think I got like the first ride on the new treaded one, and there's only three GTs in the world and they're all sitting right here. So I'm not gonna like review this entirely in this video, but there's gonna be some cool stuff that they're doing with this guy right here in the crate, and hopefully you'll see that in a second. My chopper, sight. <laughs> <laughs> One wheel bought a This is helicopter. the beauty Bell 505 Jet Ranger X of the one only awesome playboard right here. What's up, Yo, Bill? what's going on, man? How are we doing? Chilling. And what we're gonna do is set the shot up. <laughs> Even though he just landed, yeah. we're gonna have him land again, but this time with the created one wheel GT. Oh. Woo! We were just thinking, do we ratchet strap it down for the look or not? 
and we decided not not to do it. So I think we dump it out of the side and let it explode to show how bomb proof yeah, exactly. the GT is. And then after this one, <laughs> yeah. after we get the shot, we're gonna connect it to a rope and just straight drop the crate. Oh shit! You have is that like a pneumatic? <laughs> that is wild. I just thought about that, but actually could be kind of cool. <laughs> I think Julian would be kind of upset if we ruined his crate. So this was one of the things that we were talking about earlier in the video. They brought out this helicopter to shoot some content for the GT release. By the time my video comes out, this one that you're watching right now, I believe the GTs will probably be shipping to some of the first people who placed orders. So if you're one of those lucky people, congrats. I know I still haven't given you my actual riding impressions of the GT, so I'll probably do that before sundown today, but I'm gonna save like my full thoughts and review for for a later date. Now, let's watch him fly this thing around with the brand new GT in it. You saw him go in like a helicopter? He had to Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> All right guys, so I'm out here rolling around through the desert to give you my first impressions of the all new one wheel GT. Like Ted mentioned earlier on in this video, main thing about it is more power, more torque, more range, and also a little bit different aesthetics as well as some brand new foot pads. So I've already got a couple miles under my belt with both the smooth tire and the shredded tire which I'm currently riding right now. Of course, we are riding on some kind of gnarly terrain. It's bumpy, sandy, rocky. And typically, I like riding on pavement and concrete, asphalt, stuff like that. However, this type of terrain is where the GT really shines. It's sort of like a trail beast. So here's a closer look at the board itself. One thing starting up front that is gonna be a little bit different from the XRs that you may be familiar with in the past. They changed the foot pad sensors. So instead of just having like straight sensors that go out, they're sort of webbed, like my hand is spread out on the foot pad here. That will supposedly give you better sensitivity for keeping the board activated when it should be activated, and then also deactivating whenever it needs to be deactivated. You have the same sensor lights that you will find on the pint. So if I touch the left side of the board, you can see the left side light up right side leds on the right side light up these tires are now made in-house by one wheel so you can opt for a treaded version without changing it out yourself which is a little bit difficult you will also notice if you look at the side that the bumpers are a little bit wider because they're cramming way more batteries in here a lot of these guys here on the one wheel team testing this thing have been riding it 30 miles or more which is just insane. You get a lot of leg fatigue if you're not consistently riding one wheel. So riding this thing 30 miles would be pretty nuts. However, they did change the contours of the foot pads. So it kind of swoops up in all direction. And especially when you're riding off road, that's gonna give you way more control over where you're actually moving this thing around. On the back here, this particular version doesn't have the love hump, but I will show you some footage of what that looks like. Essentially, there is a hump running down the middle of the board, which will allow you to basically like stick the ball of your foot into the little groove here as well as your heel and again that just gives you way more control over the board that is super important when you are riding around off-road i think the biggest thing that i noticed when first stepping foot on this new board is that you definitely have a lot more control thanks to those contoured foot pads i definitely love what they call the love hump in the middle of the board which gives you a little bit of like arch support allowing you 
to have better control when you're going through some choppy stuff like I'm riding through right now. And also the sensitivity on this thing. I never really had a complaint about the XR, but as soon as I step foot on this thing, it is feeling a lot more responsive. It feels like the board activates a lot quicker. There is noticeably more power and torque. So when you're riding on some choppy stuff like this here, whenever you hit a bump, it sort of gives you a little bit of extra power to kind of hop over that type of terrain. When I eventually get a GT for myself, I'm definitely gonna opt for this treaded tire version because it gives you just a little bit more grip. And one thing to note about both tire options is that they're a little bit more rounded, similar to what you would find on the pint. So you're gonna have a little bit more maneuverability, especially in an urban environment, if you're navigating around people on a sidewalk or whatever it may be. But since the tire is still a little bit wider than the pint or the pint X, you still feel much more stable on this board. Now I love the pint, the XR, and definitely the GT. I thought the Pint X might be my favorite out of the new releases, but now that I've spent even just a little bit of time with the GT, I absolutely love this thing. So if I was only picking one, I think it would be the new GT. This is completely my opinion, but if we're comparing all the boards, Pint versus XR, I would pick the XR. XR versus Pint X, I would actually pick the Pint X. It's a little bit smaller, easier to carry around. You have that more rounded tire, making it a little bit more nimble. And then if we compare the Pint X versus the GT, of course, I think this is the biggest, best one wheel that they've ever made. Now, unfortunately, we are running out of light today and I'm not going to be able to bring you guys a full dedicated review on the GT, but hopefully in the future, once boards start shipping, I'll be able to get my hands on one and do a little bit more real world testing. A distance test is gonna be brutal because the range of the GT is just so dang long. But I'm super glad One Wheel chose this location to ride these things because these trails are so much fun. Thing's so sick. All right, Joey. GT. GT, oh, okay, so here's a smooth tire that I was just talking, or no, this is the other this, treaded Yeah, one. this is the treaded, yeah. This is the freshy. Yeah, super freshy right now. I know your opinion's probably biased, but what do you think, personally, of the GT? Oh, personally? Yeah. Um, I was telling you while we were on our ride together, it's got so much power, it's almost unexpected. It's almost scary. Yeah, it's like way more torquey. Yeah. Like I know the torque specs are higher, but yeah. just I took it out like way over there, just up over the bumps and everything, uh -huh. just kind of powers over it. Whereas the XR now that we're used to riding these, it yeah. feels a little more sluggish, yeah. which I never even thought about yeah, before. Yeah, especially side by side. Yeah. But like oh when you're God. going up a hill, you're not even worried about it. Like with an XR, you kind of got to give it some love here and there, stay light on your toes. Is you could just charge straight up in yeah it. torque man it's it's unreal yeah all right this is casey he's out here camp with us what do you think of the gt dude gt is super sick uh the torque on it is a lot more intense than the xr and the pint um it feels lower to the ground and a lot more stable because of that yeah um this one with the tread super crazy out here on the trails i only read the one rode the one with the bald um what, what are they called the like the soft tire, soft tire, slick tire. Slick tire, yeah. I rode that on the dirt and it was like pretty slippery. Then I hopped on that. Super grip. Yeah, it's yeah, surprising. All of the dirt, like bumps and everything. It's hard to tell like how much grip this would actually give. I've only ridden another treaded tire once, yeah. but it's actually pretty crazy, especially when you get in the sandy stuff. I like I really like riding these things like the surfboard. So going off like the rails, going up and down. And so like riding this on that really keeps you in place when you kind of go and try to rip around. It's pretty sick. All right, we're back in the van. It's surprisingly cold here where we're at in Southern California, but got the heat pump in here and the storyteller. And now I got to sit down and edit some videos tomorrow in probably the next video you guys will see gonna head from here all the way up to Lake Tahoe got like a six to seven hour drive I'm gonna be skipping past a lot of really cool spots national parks national forests and everything but later this year around May I'm gonna be heading through the same area in the Tacoma so you guys will see that stuff pretty soon 
check back in for the next video if you're interested in the van storyteller content because got another 10 days or so in the van and I'm stoked. I'm really digging this thing and hopefully you guys are enjoying the content. If you are and if you're new to this channel consider clicking subscribe and make new videos every single week. As always, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.